Okay, so thank you to everyone for joining us today. Um, we are very excited to be here. Uh, this session is From Action Plans to Meaningful Actions, a case of the Cybersecurity Center for Business as a hub for, of cyber training for the masses. Um, today, you'll be hearing from three of us. We are all members of the, the faculty and staff here at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Um, uh, next slide, please. So I'll go through a little bit about what you can expect to hear from us today. Obviously, we're going to go through some introductions so you can kind of have an idea of who we are. Um, we'll go through a little bit about some of the programs that we've, we've got currently running here on campus. Um, definitely take a dive into securing our communities. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the unique approaches that we're taking towards career pathways, uh, followed up with some Department of Labor opportunities that we're running here on campus, and as well as understanding more about the Cybersecurity Center for Business and what it is we do. Uh, and uh, as always, we will follow it up with questions and answers because we'd love to hear from the folks out there uh, about what's going on in the community and if, what questions you guys might have. Next slide, please. So our first uh, speaker up today is Dr. Roger Yen. Um, Dr. Yen is, has been at the university now for 25 years and is honestly one of the reasons that this center is up and running. Um, he is a, a, what I take, my approach is that he is our, our best colleague when it comes to putting together our cybersecurity programs and has been just an amazing partner to work with. This is a little bit about Roger and, and what he's done at the university. Next slide, please. Our second presenter will be Dominique Walsh. Um, I was able to steal Dominique away from the poli sci uh, uh, department here on campus. Uh, Dominique is running our Department of Labor Closing the Skills Gap grant. Uh, this is her first foray into the world of cybersecurity, which has been fun and interesting to see somebody who is kind of taking uh, you know, that educational approach to it and really you know, finding her way through it and understanding just how different we can really be in this world. So it's been fun. Next slide, please. I'm Brian Dennis. I'm the director of the Cybersecurity Center for Business here at University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Um, my background is actually in disaster management and, and, and recoup. And so I've been working with businesses, um, governments, um, all sorts of opportunities all over the country for quite some time in business continuity, specifically related to, to disaster planning, uh, and have found my way into cybersecurity in the last 10, 15 years. And so it's an exciting time for us to be here. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Roger, and he will dive right into some of our programs. Next slide, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Roger Yin, uh, I am on faculty in the Information Technology Program at University of Wisconsin Whitewater, and this is my 26th year. Very exciting to um, share uh, with you what we have been doing in our in institution. Um, we're Located in southeastern Wisconsin, um, squarely between Madison and Milwaukee, uh, around one hour to each city, and about two hours to um, Chicago. So we're surrounded by three um, decent-sized cities in, uh, in the upper Midwest, um, three, access to three airports, so very, very convenient. Um, we un currently enroll about 14,000 students altogether. Uh, undergraduate and graduate combined. Uh, we, the Center of Cybersecurity Center for Business, um, also um, is located and uh, housed, housed, uh, housed in Business College. Our Business College um, currently has 4,200 4, 4, uh, students. We're the largest business college in the state of Wisconsin. Our online MBA has been uh, quite successful. Um, we have over 600 full-time students. Uh, I'm on faculty of the MBA program as well. Um, we are now ranked uh, top 25 in terms of the online MBA space in the United States. College is AACSB accredited. Uh, it's kind of interesting because the uh, assurance of learning required by AACSB matches the, uh, the program of study um, requirements of the uh, CA, CAE um, uh, pro process. That's, that's very interesting to mention. Our IT has 150 undergrad majors and about 200 minors. And our CompSci uh, program has about 300 undergraduate majors. So IT and computer science combined are in the, in the 
growth um, process. So the, the two programs collaborate on the Masters of Science and a new Bachelors of Science uh, in cybersecurity programs. So academic programs are up and coming. Uh, we have the um, uh, unfailing support from our campus leaders and administrators uh, up to the deans, provost, and the chancellor are in support of our uh, academic program endeavors. IT cyber students have over 90% of internship rate uh, in IT and cybersecurity related industry partners. We have a very high placement rate. Uh, IT and computer science graduates have close to perfect uh, placement rate within 12 months of graduation. And we're, we have been very proud of it. As you can see uh, at the bottom of the slide, the, uh, um, the employers have been very loyal to us, by the way, and a lot of the uh, alumni um, have been working um, in, for this, um, in this in the uh, companies. Many of them are sitting on our advisory boards, by the way. Um, we're gonna uh, tell you more about uh, the, the leftmost company, Acuity Insurance, who actually um, became our major sponsor of the cyber defense range that uh, later Dominic and Brian will mention. Since Brian and Dominic joined, we started the Cybersecurity Center for Business and it goes hand in hand with the academic programs. In, in the next slides or so, I'm going to explain to you um, the, the center, how, how the center is related to uh, the community of practitioners. Next slide, please. We see there are three pillars in securing our communities. Um, academics, uh, we, all, we have uh, two-year institutions and four-year institutions. Uh, we uh, are squarely at the, uh, the four-year um, plus space uh, at UW-Whitewater. We work closely with uh, regional technical colleges. We're close to uh, have an agreement um, with um, Waukesha Te uh, County Technical College, WCTC. Uh, uh, we believe that this type of collaboration um, will probably enhance um, the, um, the graduation and the placement of um, people who enroll in our two-year and four-year um, degree programs in the cyberspace. Also, we have um, public sector partners. It will include K-12 school districts, local governments, state governments, and federal agencies. Um, Dominic and Brian will introduce you to our uh, Department of Labor and Department of, of defense uh, grant projects. Um, like to mention that we are working very closely with our K-12 partners, local governments, and we just had a meeting with our state um, CIO and the CISO uh, to, to talk about closer co uh, collaborations and have the state uh, cyber incident response team uh, to have training um, conducted at our uh, cyber range. Also, the third um, partner, um, a third pillar in this uh, big picture, to secure our communities will be private sector partners. It will include corporations and don't forget nonprofits and small and medium sized businesses. So um, security is everyone's responsibility and therefore share uh, ownership of risk and security posture of this, these three pillars will be very, very important. Next slide, please. So when we develop our academic programs, um, case in point, the master's degree, uh, the MS, MS in cybersecurity, we just launched this fall. And I just wrap up the first eight week course on the fundamentals of ethical hacking. So um, the course is not teaching to the CEH certification, but we mirror the, the uh, body of knowledge and the practical um, aspect of uh, becoming a penetration tester um, where the red team meets blue team. Um, that, that is a very, very interesting experience. Um, I think that it's worth mentioning that the, the center, uh, cybersecurity center 
for business offers uh, the, our academic program curricular development in multiple ways. Worth mentioning that um, we will have a cyber defense range. Um, later, Brian will mention uh, and bring more details to your attention. Um, the center actually uh, allow um, us, the faculty members, to use uh, live cases uh, from our business partners. There are industry connections and uh, members of our advisory board coming from the uh, connection through the center. The center also bring uh, research and development opportunities. Uh, we have an active uh, line of research uh, uh, paper I'm co-authoring uh, with a number of researcher, re research, uh, research associates in uh, blockchain and COVID-19 uh, in relation to um, privacy and security it is uh, in print very soon. Grant writing partnership, um, it's very, very important to mention that the external resources will be important to enable us um, implementing some of our plans uh, and um, academic uh, curricula. Student internship, this way we have um, internal IT internships offered to our uh, degree searching students. It's kind of win-win um, any way you look at it. Cyber career pathways, uh, we definitely use um, the um, CyberSeq career pathway. I'm going to um, show it to you uh, the way we interpret it um, and also integrate it into the, um, uh, the NSA CAE uh, infrastructure. Uh, so every inch in the way we map our curricular development process into the, the NICE framework. I know NICE um, is going through a new uh, version that's very exciting. Um, we also map, map into the NIST cybersecurity framework. Uh, therefore, our courses are closely tied to the industry um, standards and the federal frameworks. Next slide, please. Everyone is familiar with the CyberSeq uh, career pathway. Um, and we firmly believe that there is a need to prepare feeders to the feeder roles since people um, gradually move into the entry level, they seek out opportunities to move into mid levels and above. Uh, next slide, please. Therefore, we take a boots on the ground approach. Uh, we want to identify meaningful ways, meaningful actions so that we can actually prepare more feeders to the feeder roles everyone. Um, so through cybersecurity apprenticeship program, and this is a uh, Department of Labor grant, uh, Dominic will take over after this slide, we'll provide you with more detailed explanation. Um, the training can bridge the still skills gap by leveraging many underemployed and unemployed um, individuals of our society, um, and also um, people with disabilities. Um, they can actually have an opportunity to um, get into the cybersecurity um, secure uh, pathway. Um, so this is what we envision. This is more like um, moving the cyber C career pathway sideway, and you look at the cybersecurity workforce pyramid. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Dominic Walsh. Next slide, please. So uh, as Brian said, when he introduced me, uh, I'm a trained political scientist and uh, I've recently switched jobs. Uh, I actually started working in, in March, just a few days before we all moved remote. So uh, there are two big changes happening all at once. And um, I have 11 nieces and nephews and for every holiday, I send them cards with cheesy jokes and puns inside of them. And this year, because of my new career shift, um, I sent a lot of um, Halloween cards that had jokes about, um, you know, computers and stuff in it. So here's an example of one uh, that I wrote to my um, nephew, Connor. Why did the spider choose a job in IT? He was a good web designer. Ha ha ha, ha the very funny. 
Now, what, what you might have heard there was that I used the pronoun he, and that is the problem. Um, there, that is the main stereotype of people working in computer fields, particularly cyber, as you well know. Um, and in all of these cheesy jokes and puns that I was seeing that I was writing to my nieces and nephews, they always use the pronoun he. And what you have here is the familiar CyberSeq map. There's over half a million jobs in cybersecurity in the U.S. and there's over 5,000 in our state of Wisconsin alone. Um, and despite the diverse set of career opportunities in the cyber field, people working in the field are not diverse. They're mostly white, they're mostly male. And we see this Department of Labor closing the skills grant, closing the skills gap grant that we received, we see that as an opportunity to sort of change some of this. Um, next slide, next slide, please. So as Roger said, um, one of the things that we're doing here at the center is starting an apprenticeship program through this um, Closing the Skills Gap um, Department of Labor grant. And uh, as part of this uh, uh, program, what we're doing is creating a cybersecurity apprenticeship program. So we're doing a 16 week training, just sort of like a boot camp, really fundamental skills that Roger and his um, colleague Xiao Jin Xiao are um, working on creating. And then once they're done with that training, they'll do 600 hours of paid on the job work. Um, and as a part of this program, they will have mentorship through, um, you know, some of our graduate students, mentorship through people who are already working in the field, will create a roadmap for them for where to go with their career, right? So like, maybe they start with this, maybe they want to go into a two year program, maybe they want to continue on with more industry recognized credentials, uh, maybe they want to go into a four year program or a master's program. And one of the big focuses here is uh, diversifying the workforce, changing that he so that maybe if we say she once in a while, it doesn't seem so weird. And again, as Roger said, really focusing on some of our underemployed or underserved populations. And um, at the end of it, they will, you know, they'll have finished this, they'll have experience to allow them to kind of maybe move into a feeder role. Um, and they'll have an industry recognized certification, right, we're, we're going to have them do a CompTIA A plus exam. And, and this is where I come in. If you go back to the beginning, I said I was a trained political scientist. I specialize in methods and so I can run numbers and do the data and do all that stuff. Um, but I'm also at heart uh, really interested in the role of government in making people's lives better. Cybersecurity is the next level of warfare and the next threat to the safety of citizens. So our data, our finances, our personal security, it's all tied up into um, what's going on in the internet, what's going on with our computers, right? So the internet of things is no joke. If someone can hack into your HVAC system, um, if you're away during the winter and they turn off your heat, or if they hack into your security system. Um, people are talking about um, cybersecurity in terms of free, fair, and trusted elections. You know, right now that's a really big deal. Um, and the government is important in this journey. Public policy plays a huge impact in the development of workforce trends, right? So from the uh, Work Progress Administration that was created in the midst of the Great Depression, and that put millions of people back to work on uh, infrastructure and arts projects to bring joy back to the country, um, you know, after this terrible economic crisis. Uh, the creation of the AmeriCorps in the 1990s to address the needs of um, many poor and underserved communities in the U.S., you know, the federal government government has played a role in the direction of the workforce. And I feel like this, this um, particular grant program is our opportunity to demonstrate that the government should make cybersecurity education a priority um, for the future economic health of the country. Um, we need to create a way for the feeders to the feeders <laughs> to get involved quickly and easily. Um, and this apprenticeship program, I think, is one way in a, a really super creative way um, to get it done. Uh, so from here, I will pass it on to Brian. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Dominique. So what I'm going to do is give you guys a little bit more background on the Cybersecurity Center for Business and, and what it is we really do. Uh, so this center was actually created out of the America Small Business Development Center Network. The ASBDC network is a nationwide group um, that runs about 1,400 offices nationwide. Uh, and they serve as business consultants to any business defined as small by the SBA. Uh, the Small Business Administration's um, definition of an SBA uh, of a small business is 
it's relatively loose. Um, I worked with employers that had just one person in, in, in a computer. I also worked with employers that had 500 employees and over $100 million in sales. And so that concept of what makes a small business was, was pretty hard to define. But while we were working with the ASBDC, we kept running into an issue, and that was cybersecurity. Uh, what we realized was that our business community as a whole is woefully unprepared um, for what's happening in cybersecurity today. And when we started looking at what needed to be done, we realized that the, the marriage of education had to happen here. And so in 2018, we really started taking a look at opportunities across the country to see where we might be able to fit this program in and really make it work and ended up um, touring a, a few universities nationwide. And it was surprising. I think it surprised myself and my wife, especially when I said that we're going to go to Wisconsin into Whitewater, Wisconsin, and that's where we're moving this thing. Um, at the time, I had never heard of Whitewater. But when I came to visit, I found a university that not only was nimble enough to take a program like this on, but had faculty that was committed to the concepts that were brewing here. And they are really excited to work with us. And so that's what we've been able to, since, since we've been here, since uh, February of 2019, we've been finding um, large amounts of success very quickly with what we've been doing. Uh, this is actually now my third year speaking at the NICE conference. Um, I was in Miami two years ago and I was in Phoenix last year. Um, I, I do wish that we were actually in Atlanta this year. Uh, so I'm already looking forward to next year's conference. Um, but what I found is that through the National Initiative for Cyber Education and through programs like NIST, um, we're finding a lot of people who are looking to us as an opportunity to see what's really going to happen next within cybersecurity education. Next slide, please. So what we're doing here is we're really focused on several key areas. The first is workforce. When we start thinking about the workforce in cybersecurity, we're not just thinking about cybersecurity professionals. Uh, my thinking is that workforce has to be thought of as an ecosystem. And so when we think about what the workforce looks like today, we're thinking about everyone. You know, Right now, due to COVID-19, we've got an, a, a tremendous amount of people who are newly unemployed. Um, and so they are trying to think about what their next career path might look like. Uh, they've probably never thought about a, a career in IT or a career in cybersecurity. And so if they wanted to consider that, where do they go? How, how, what are they going to find out there when they start trying to knock on those doors? And we really want to give people that opportunity to see what it might look like if they decided to come and, and dip their toe in the cybersecurity world. We're also very focused you know, on building a workforce that is more representative of who we are. And so that underrepresented population is, in, is very important to us. Uh, we are building relationships with um, our offices of diversity and inclusion here in the state. We're building our relationships in Milwaukee. We've got a great one with the Hispanic Collaborative where we're getting people who traditionally have not been a part of this community and we're giving them opportunities and chances to do so. Another area that we're very focused on is the underemployed. When we go back and start thinking about our business relationships, we're thinking about the small businesses that we've got working right now in, in Wisconsin alone, we've got 440,000 small businesses nationwide, we're sitting at about 40 million. Um, within each of these businesses, they need to start thinking about cybersecurity. And I know that not every small business out there can afford to bring on a cybersecurity professional, and not every business out there can afford to bring on a, a, a cybersecurity consultant who can help with their, their plans. But what we can do is encourage business owners to have at least one person on staff who works kind of as an evangelical for cybersecurity, che checking to make sure that passwords are changed, you know, trying to put together a plan of action so they can properly respond and recover from an attack. And so we're really focused on that underemployed group as well. And then next is that upskilling. We've got to really continue to upskill our professionals. Uh, for the, the folks that are getting these four-year degrees in cybersecurity, which we'll be offering soon, we want to make sure that they understand that a career in cybersecurity means a commitment to lifetime learning. Uh, we can't just be happy with the fact that we've got a four-year degree and, and, and hope, hopeful that nothing ever happens. What we know is that this is a constantly changing world. Uh, cybersecurity is one that is going to 
not go away anytime soon. And so we know that we have to constantly, constantly learn. And then finally, we are focused on that highly skilled portion of the workforce. We are not leaving that out. While we do take this very boots on the ground approach to cybersecurity, um, we do see that that highly skilled workforce needs help as well. And so that's one of the areas that we're focused on when we look at the range opportunities that we're building, as well as the mini credentialing pieces that we're putting in place. Next, supply, next slide, please. So one of the things that we're working on that we're really excited about is a Department of Defense program. So we have the what we're calling WISSECURED, the Wisconsin Execution of Cybersecurity Understanding, Remediation, and Education for Defense. Uh, that is a lot of words. But it is a program that we're really excited about because we're focused on the concepts that are coming out of CMMC. Cybersecurity Mo Maturity Model Certification has been pushed out by the DOD this year. Um, we're expecting the first probably 10 or so contracts with CMMC requirements to, to start hitting uh, contractors any time now. Uh, and so our goal is to prop up the DOD supply chain within the state of Wisconsin to make sure that they're ready for these upcoming changes. And so within this grant, we're working with two prime contractors, uh, Marinette Marine and Oshkosh Corporation. Marinette is building uh, frigates for the Navy and Oshkosh Corporation is building what can only be described as the next line of Hummers. It's this off-road vehicle that looks really cool. Um, but in doing so, the, the need to be cyber secure is paramount. Uh, and so each of these companies has a supply chain that's about 600 companies long. And so to get these companies in line, we have to work with them to make sure that they understand what's needed to be CMMC ready. And, and what we're finding is that as we started asking these companies along the pathway, along these, the supply chain, if they, if they understood what CMMC meant, um, most of them had no idea what the letters even stood for. And so we know that we've got an uphill battle to get companies prepared for this, but it's one that we know that we can take on. Uh, this first line of our Department of Defense grant is, is about 18 months long, um, but we envision this program going for about 11 years. Our goal here is to build a program that is replicable, that we can um, push out to other states who are looking to build their supply chains and secure their supply chains in a, in a fashion that can be done quickly. What we've done with the, helps of, with the help of some of our faculty, specifically Roger here, uh, is we are building um, opportunities for assessments. And so our companies can come in and, oh my God, and take their assessments. Uh, and excuse me just a second, of course, my lights went out. Uh, when you don't move in my office, yeah, it's fine. Uh, you know, always have a, a strange change of it. Um, as we build these assessments, we're finding out that these companies are going to um, need to fall within five key, five key areas of the CMMC certification. We estimate that most of them will fall within categories one or two, but all the way up to three. And so there's a lot of opportunity that's going to exist here within CMMC. Next slide, please. Along with that CMMC component, um, we see the need for certifying certifiers. And so here at the Cybersecurity Center for Business, uh, one of the areas that we're gonna focus on is becoming a talent acquisition piece really for the, for the certifiers out there. Uh, so when we know that we're gonna need about probably 10 to 15,000 CMMC certifiers over the, the course of the next five to 10 years uh, throughout the country, we plan to be a, 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 a powerhouse for putting that talent out here in Wisconsin. Uh, the, we'll be able to do that through the training that we're developing here, through the partners that we've created with the Department of Defense. Uh, and we know that we'll be able to do it because of our range. And that's one of the most exciting things that I think we're working on here. Next slide, please. So what we're building right now is the Acuity Cyber, Cybersecurity Defense Range. Uh, Acuity Insurance is a large insurance company based here in Wisconsin. Uh, we are very fortunate to have partners in Wisconsin that, that are very interested in cybersecurity. And the acuity range is going to be a very, very unique concept. And so what we're doing here is building a cybersecurity range that we've seen ranges all over the country. Uh, actually, when Roger and I went to the NICE conference last year in uh, Phoenix, we were able to tour a range while we were out there that really blew us away. It was fantastic and it was state of the art. And, and as soon as we walked in, we kind of thought this is what we would like. That range had a focus of working with large companies. And so their clients were Facebook and Google and, and, and Amazon actually uh, had time on their range. 
And so we started looking at what other ranges are doing in the country and, and what could we create here that might be a little bit different. And what we found is that there is a need for business training on, on uh, cybersecurity ranges. It just doesn't really exist right now. Uh, in the ranges that we've taken a look at and all over the country, a lot of the range time is bought up by large corporations, understandably, because they want their businesses to be safe and secure as they move forward. But what that leaves out is the opportunity for small to medium-sized businesses to train. It also leaves out student access to training. Um, we've run across several um, cybersecurity ranges that are sitting at universities where those students never have access to the range that's in place. And what we want to do is create a range where the students have access to, to, to utilize it and learn from the range as our businesses are learning alongside them. And so this range is a, is a, a giant step forward uh, for cybersecurity education, not just in Wisconsin, but throughout the country. Uh, so what we want to do here is build a program that we can replicate. And so when we think about that, we see the Cybersecurity Center for Business as an option for other universities that want to tackle this, but really tackle it from the ground up as opposed from that high skilled on. And so we see the, these training opportunities that didn't really exist before for small businesses to access, for students to access, that can implement changes within not just a, a, a business itself, but really a society. We have got to start bringing cybersecurity education to the masses. We've got to make sure that it's being taught as early as kindergarten. And, and so we need to start giving people options for learning. And we see this as an opportunity to do that. Next slide, please. So that is a little bit about what we're doing here. Uh, we are more than happy to hear questions. We've got about 10 or about 15, well, 13 minutes left. Uh, and so we'd love to hear from you guys in any questions you might have. So Brian, there's a question in the Q&A that I think I'll, I'll take. So um, Michael Preble asks, I appreciate your point about apprenticeship combined with public or sorry, public or publicly subsidized employment as an economic recovery strategy. What kinds of projects could you see apprentices taking on if federal stimulus spending is driven through local regional hubs like the Cybersecurity Center for Business? So Dominique, you want me to take that? Well, I can take it. I, yeah, I jotted no. down some notes. Um, so I think Brian and I see this as a need for, um, so kind of two, I have a two pronged response to this one. So we have um, businesses obviously in the defense supply chain who need to be CMCC um, certified. And we can see apprentices as really helping for them to um, reach at, at least level one and level two. Um, and also there's a need for apprentices in, you know, small to medium sized businesses who may not have anyone doing any sort of cyber at all, cybersecurity at all. Um, maybe they have someone who kind of does computers, maybe they don't. Um, and then, you know, schools, K through 12 schools, small businesses, small governments, city and county governments. And we sort of see the apprentices role as um, working with the NIST cybersecurity framework, right? So when they're doing their 600 hours of on the job training, right? They're they're kind of doing the identify, protect, detect, respond, recover thing. Um, and so they're they're kind of helping with some of those, um, you know, kind of helping those smaller businesses or city governments or whatever kind of governments that don't already have this in place to get that in place um, just so that there's a very baseline, right? Very baseline level of cybersecurity. Do you yeah, and, and our apprentices, we really see them um, getting access to really start on the concepts, these five key concepts pushed out by NIST of identify, detect, protect, respond, recover. Uh, and so what we want our businesses to start thinking about is how do they approach their cybersecurity? Most businesses have no planning done whatsoever. Um, the army of apprentices that we're going to be putting out throughout the state of Wisconsin over the next four years, that's going to be their goal is to go into these businesses, help them develop a, a plan of action and specifically help them a, a develop a plan of action that is usable. Um, as a business continuity planner over the years, I've seen plenty of businesses put these concepts together and maybe once a year they might take it out and dust it off and see if it's working. But what we want to see is an actionable plan that our businesses are incorporating into, into their everyday business. And, and so we see this as an opportunity, not just for the apprentices, but for the businesses themselves. Um, I see the next question is, is the range currently up and running? If not, when do we anticipate going live? 
Uh, our range is uh, anticipated to go live in January of 2021. Um, we, in March of this year, we <laughs> created the concept of our range, which was going to be, we were going to have this really cool center where people would come to us and it would just be this great opportunity for people to um, sit next to one another and rub elbows with other cybersecurity professionals. And, and, you know, that has completely changed. And so we've moved away from our construction project that we were putting together to put the range in place. And we are, are going to be putting our, our range up and running in initially uh, remote opportunities. And so physically we intended to seat anywhere between 16 to 20 people at a time on the range. Um, we see the range now having the opportunity to seat anywhere between 125 to 100 people at a time. And so our um, opportunity to utilize the range um, for not just Wisconsin, but for other companies across the country is going to be big. Uh, our goal here is to really support our region. And so we've already been approached um, by other states uh, who are interested in buying time on our range. And, and while we do appreciate their enthusiasm, our goal is to show them why this works and why they should do it themselves at other regional universities. What we see is that the, the really sweet spot for centers like this one and for ranges like this one really exist in regional universities. Uh, we don't see that these big tier one research institutions being really nimble enough to, to allow for something like this to come in. Additionally, regional universities, I think are gonna benefit from building cybersecurity ranges because what they can help do is help drive a little bit of profit back to the university themselves. That's our goal here is to remain, uh, I, I never wanna ask the university for a dime. And, and so far we've been pretty good about doing that. Um, our goal as a, as a unit is to increase the opportunities for education along all pathways, and the range is going to be big for getting that accomplished. Any other questions for today? Brian, do you see the yep, question? I do. So the cost of the range. So that when we started, when Roger and I decided that we wanted to, to put a range in place, uh, we have another colleague here on campus. His name is Kevin Kaufman. Roger, Kevin, and I started looking at this and, and, and what the expense would be. Um, there are opportunities out there to put a range in place for probably around fifty to 60000 it, it can be done. Um, the, the, the issue with that is it, it doesn't offer everything we need. Um, and so our cost is much, much larger than that. Um, our cost for our range is probably, probably going to be close to um, anywhere between 300 to 700,000 a year to, for our range to operate. Um, and that's just for the tech uh, component of the range. Um, we do see the ability to make those dollars back. Uh, by working with large corporate partners. And that's what we've been able to find very quickly with Acuity was that we, we found somebody who was very interested in funding our range because they see the opportunity as a pipeline for talent. Um, but, you know, and so it really depends on what you're looking at doing. Um, the, I know that the, out of Michigan, actually, the Merit Group, Merit Range, they have a very well-priced range and it is a very, very good range. Um, it, it was just a little bit too specific for local governments. And so if you're looking at putting a range together where you really want local governments to utilize it, that's the one to go for. It's got a great price tag and can be easily uh, implemented into what you're doing. Um, we decided to go with a range that has a little bit more uh, uh, oomph behind it. And it definitely has the opportunities for training um, somebody who's brand new to the field as well as offering very specific training to people who've been in the cybersecurity field for years. Um, the tr the, and I see minus training for the, the next question. Um, yeah, the, the training um, that we've put in place for the range actually comes with what we're paying. And so the, it, it's kind of an all-in-one deal. Um, Faisal, I am not sure of which Virginia cyber range you're talking about. Is this the one at Virginia Tech? Um, 
Okay. Yeah, that's that's one that we haven't actually toured yet. And so I'll have to take a look at that. I'm I Roger, do you know anything about their range? It's an excellent range. Um, but what we are looking at as a solution uh, is a uh, hyper-realistic um, corporate training type, if you uh, allow me to say that, uh, as opposed to an academic uh, sandbox or a super sandbox approach to look at safe um, hacking. Um, it, it, it will be uh, a drastic, um, like, if not mind boggling um, challenge for um, educators and, and conventional uh, students to look at the, the, the type of cyber range activities we are um, working to build. Um, and we, again, we will have direct input from the companies who will allow a uh, vetted stripped down version of their network system with all the software applications and data flowing through and seeing some bad actors doing their work in near real time. So that's gonna be a very, very um, educational for all parties involved. Yes, our range provider is actually very excited to be working with us um, because they see this as such a, a, a new concept and how to use a range. Um, and so we're excited to be working with them. Um, hopefully we'll be able to announce that partnership very, very soon. Um, we we're definitely going with them. It's just the legalities of everything. And so, yes, it is private right now. Uh, we will, we will announce it very soon. So just keep an eye on our, uh, our website. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about us and, and about who our range provider will be again, we're looking at launching in January of this year. And so we're probably, hopefully going to sign the, the legal pieces of it within the next week or two. So I think that's it on the questions. Um, thank you everyone for reach, for coming today. Um, you know, the nice conference is, is always, it's a, I, I really miss being with everybody because I get so much out of it. I know last year in Phoenix, we had an opportunity to, to meet and mingle with hundreds of people from across the country. And I, I just really, really look forward to it every year. And so for anybody who's on the call today, if you'd like to learn more, feel free to reach out to Dominique Roger or myself. Um, we kind of talk about this to no end and, and we always look forward to talking about it to anyone who's willing to listen. So thank you all very much. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference and we will uh, hopefully see you next year in person.